Hi, AT from CNC at Home. I want to get some tiles and get them prepped for uh, painting. And uh, I'm going to do multiple colors, multiple layers of colors. I'm going to have yellow, orange, red, then black. So to do this, we need to get the tiles all ready to accept the paint. The first thing we want to do is knock down the edges from the back side. So I just, just quickly run that across the grinding wheel and get that knocked down. Now that that's done, the next step is to get the face of the tile all nice and clean. So I use a lacquer thinner to get rid of any oil or grease or anything that might have gotten on the tiles. Get them nice and ready. Then I'll get them staged up on my painting board and we'll get them outside into my uh, outside paint booth. Here's my outside paint booth. It works fairly well on nice days. First layer is going to be the yellow color. Ugh. Well, that was a mistake. Brand new can of paint and I didn't see if it was gonna splatter or not. If I was smart, I would have stopped there and cleaned that off, but I wasn't. And I just let it ride. We'll pay for that later. I'm gonna respace these out as the next coat on four of these is going to be orange and on the other four, it's going to be green. It's hard to see in these pictures, for some reason, the orange paint reacts with the summer squash or the yellow paint and causes it to separate and kind of peel back. We'll talk about that later in the video. Adding a red coat onto two of the tiles. The last coat here is the black. This time I'm using a gloss black instead of a flat black, just to see how that works. I'm gonna try burning the sun again. This time I'm going to burn it at 3000 millimeters per minute at 65% power. So a little bit more power than we did last time. The reason for that is I'm using one of the new tiles where it has, it's a white tile with yellow then orange, then red, and then black on top of that. So it's four layers of paint. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I might need to crank the power up a little bit more, but uh, this is just the first test. I won't bore you with the burning part. Um, if you want to see that, go look at the prior video. The burn is finished. Hard to tell what it's really going to look like until we get this cleaned up. I'm going to take it upstairs to the sink and give it a quick scrub, and then we'll take a look at it. Here's what it looks like after it was cleaned. It really just kind of looks washed out. I don't know if it turned out so well. This is the first attempt with just the orange and black. And that turned out better, I think. There's the second attempt where I did go slower. So there's more, more orange, but not, uh, not the hot spots. So I'm thinking that I can do more of the burn like this, but with the tile with the multiple layers, see what that does. So I'll do 3000 for the speed and I'll do 50% on the power, see what that turns out like. Again, won't bore you with the setup or the burning part. We'll look at the end result. Alright, this looks a lot better. I mean, not a lot better, but it looks better. It's much more reddish and orange. So this is at 65% power at 3000 millimeters per minute. This is the same speed, but at 50% power. 
I'll slide that over. Let's take a comparison to what we did last time. So this is the first one that I did. And it's very much more orange because this just had the orange paint, whereas this one had the yellow, orange, then red paint on it. So it has more of a red look to it than this one, which is just orange. This was the first one I did. This was the second one. And then this was the second one I did today. It has the red paint in it. Oh, hard to know which one I like better. Looking on the uh, camera screen, this one turned out pretty nicely. In real life, though, toss up between these two. Well, here's how it turned out. It's kind of interesting. I didn't let the paint dried quite enough before I put the second coat on so that yellow paint had kind of globbed out of the can. I didn't uh, pre-spray it. Um, it was kind of an interesting effect. It ended up making cracks in here so it kind of looks interesting with the tile. So this was my first attempt with the, the yellow, orange, red, then black. It turned out pretty well. I did slow the slow the burn down and did another attempt. Let's take a look at that. This one turned out pretty well as also. It's down in here we get kind of the yellowish look, which is what I was going for. And then in the cooler spots, we've got more of the red. This process to seemed to work fairly well. I kind of like it. I did turn both of these into coasters. I placed a cork back on here. It's just a four by four piece of cork with an adhesive back. Turned the logo on it as well. So these will make a nice little gift for someone. This particular tile is just the yellow, orange, and then black. This is another sun image that I downloaded, tried burning. This one turned out fairly well. This is the original Hulk tile that we did with the white tile with green fluorescent paint on it, and then black on top of that, and it turned out real nicely. Another experiment that I did though is I started with a yellow paint, then fluorescent green, then black. Here's how that turned out. Let's take a look at these close up side by side. Adding that yellow underneath really makes it look different. Still turned out really nice. Let's take a moment and talk about spray paint. I'm doing multiple coats of paint, multiple colors, and I've been running into an issue with uh, one of the combinations of paint. I'd like to see if we can pick this up on the camera. So you can kind of see, oh, this works really well here. So you can kind of see in here these cracks. And that happened when I put the second layer of paint on. I started out with this can of, what is it, Summer Squash. So it's the Rust Oleum Painter's Touch Summer Squash. Put a coat of that on. Um, and that worked fine. And then as you saw, I painted the fluorescent green on half of the tiles and the fluorescent orange on the other half. The green ones, nothing happened to them. The fluorescent orange one, that's where I got that odd kind of cracking in there. And uh, I thought that was odd. 
And I went ahead and then I put a red layer on it and that didn't do any more. And then I put the, the black layer on top of that. So this one's the yellow, orange, red, and blue. I marked the back of the tiles just so I can remember what I've done to them. So I contacted rust -Oleum about that because each one of these paints, these are all three rust -Oleum paints, so one brand. So I didn't, you know, didn't have to worry about them coming back and saying, well, you can't mix brands and formulas, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. So let me quick read what uh, the response was on this, and then we can kind of formulate a plan how we would move forward in the future. So basically, um, this, is, this is what they wrote back. After the skin has started to form, it is very fragile, and if recoated at the wrong time, it may wrinkle, blister, or crack. For our products, the recoat time is within one hour or after 48 hours. Deviating from this will cause wrinkling. Okay, so it was the same time. I sprayed this on, it was dry to the touch, so it seemed dry to me at least. This is probably this one, this one's probably gonna chroma key out, so it's gonna look funky. Um, so we've got fluorescent orange and fluorescent green. The green worked fine, the orange didn't. That tells me f there's formula difference somehow. There's something in the orange that's, that's interacting with the paint. Um, according to uh, the Rust-Oleum people, it's just a drying time issue. And that very well could be true. So the next thing that I want to try is spray some tiles with the summer squash and let that dry for two days. I will give it the full 48 hour curing time and then I will recoat re with, um, I'll put some green on and I'll put some orange on and see if I get any of this, you know, funky cracking in the paint um, or not. I don't know if there's a really good way to see that. Anyway, it actually kind of is a neat texture. It's completely random and it makes each one of these uh, potential coasters unique. It's just the, the burning on this is going to not be accurate because the thicknesses will be different where the, the cracking was. So anyway, that's what I've come across and what I found out with the paint. And so another experiment, like I said, will be to let that first coat of summer squash fully cure for two days before I paint anything else on it. I hope you found this video informative and uh, it would certainly help the channel if you liked the video and subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and uh, have a great time experimenting and doing your CNC at home stuff.